Hi, Dana here. Welcome to Sew, Learn, Create, where we do videos of sewing, crafting, and DIY projects. Today, pro today's project is a bag handle cover. It opens up, fits around the handle of your bag, closes, and it gives you a nice soft handle to carry your bag, especially when you're carrying something heavy. Great for luggage, backpack, or even those grocery bags from the store. So, let's get started. For today's project, the bag handle, you'll just need a few simple supplies. One of our supplies that we'll need is our Velcro, the hook and loop. And you wanna make sure that you get the sew-in kind of hook and loop, not the adhesive kind. So to start our project, we place our batting on the bottom, then we do our bottom fabric face up, right side up. We take our top fabric and we put it right side down. And I have a little trick that I use when I'm going to leave an opening because we're going to stitch all the way around leaving an opening on the side so we can turn our project right side out. I take my wonder clips, or you can do the same thing with a pen. I use a green pin for where I'm going to start, or green clip, and I use a red clip for where I need to stop. And this will be my opening that I have. So I'm going to start my stitching here, I'm going to stitch all the way around, and I'm going to stop my stitching on this side. I'm going to get this clipped, and then we'll head to the machine. Now we're ready to stitch all the way around. Remember we're going to start at our green clip stitching all the way around and stop at our red clip. So I'm going to remove my green clip, slide it into my machine. I'm using my quarter inch foot so I have this nice guide here so my seam allowance is a quarter of an inch. Always start with your needle down in your fabric before you start your machine. When I get to my corner I'm going to stop about a quarter of an inch away Remove that clip so I have a little more space. I'm going to leave my needle down in my fabric, lift my presser foot, and turn my project. Come to my next corner, needle down, lift and turn. When you're working with clips, be sure when you remove them that you secure that fabric with your finger so that it doesn't slip on you. Just a few more stitches to my corner. Once again, lift and turn. Remove my clips. last corner and then I'm going to remove my red clip and I'm going to place my finger there so I know where I need to stop. Back stitch a little bit. I like to clip my threads as I go so then they're not in my way when I'm trying my next step. Now that I've got it stitched all the way around I like to flip my project over and make sure that I caught all my fabric. So let's go to the mat. Once again, I'm going to check and make sure that my stitching caught all of my fabric and my batting. And it looks like it's good. So our next step is to clip our corners. When you're clipping your corners, you want to clip diagonally. Here's my stitching line. And I want to make sure that I clip across my corner to reduce the bulk, but I don't stitch don't cut my stitching. You're going to do that on all four corners. So I've cut it, but here's my stitching line so I have plenty of room so I'm not right on top of that stitching. Because if you cut your stitching, then you have to turn it and you have to stitch again. Last corner. 
Now we're ready to turn it right side out. So you find your opening, put your finger inside, and I like to find a corner, put my thumb, and poke it out. And that gives me a good chunk to make it turn easier. I'm going to turn it all the way out. And I'm going to use a chopstick to help me get those corners nice and pointed. By reducing that bulk in the corner, it helps make your corners nice and crisp. When you're using the chopstick, you want to do it gently because if you poke too hard, you will poke out your stitching. And then you have to turn it right side out and do it again. Last corner. Once I've got them down, I take my chopstick and I run it down the inside along the seam. And that just helps it lay flat. And I do that all the way around. Kind of gets those seams laying the way that you want them to. Now I've turned right side out. Next we're going to press, but before we press we want to make sure that we've turned this fabric in so that it lines up evenly and when we top stitch all the way around this will close up this opening. So I'm going to take your iron and I'm using all cotton fabric so I can use a fairly high iron setting but if you're using a cotton, a cotton or polyester fabric or a blend, you want to make sure that you use the proper setting on your iron. Because if you get too hot with polyester, it will melt. So now it's all nice and crisp, and we're going to go back to the machine, and we're going to do a narrow top stitch all the way around, closing up this opening. Now we're ready to do our top stitching, and we want to make sure that we close up this opening. When you're doing your top stitching, you want to start on a long side, never in the corner. If you go to a corner, it makes your machine work harder and it sometimes will mess up. So I usually start a little above my opening. And I'm using the inside edge of my quarter inch foot for my top stitching so that it's nice and even and gives me a good guide. Again, start with your needle down in your fabric and we're going to top stitch all the way around. Doing a little back stitch at the beginning. Again, when I come to that corner, I'm going to put my needle down, lift and turn, and keep going. You are going through a little bit of bulk, so when you get to those corners, especially, you've got a lot more bulk with the batting and the two pieces of fabric. So you want to just kind of go slow. Needle down, lift and turn, almost there. <clears throat> Last corner. I'm going to come back to my stitching and I'm going to stitch across my stitching line and then back stitch to secure it. And our top stitching is done. Once again, I'm going to clip my threads as I go. Now we're ready to position our hook and loop tape. Now we're ready to add our Velcro or some people call it hook and loop tape. Your hook and loop tape has two sides. One is a softer or fuzzy side, and the other is the hook, and so it's kind of rough. So you separate your tape, and we're going to put one side on one end of our baggage ho handle holder, and we're going to put the other side on the opposite end, opposite side. It doesn't really matter which way you do hook or loop, hook or the soft side on either end because our bag handle is reversible. To position it, you will need to use a pen. 
I found that the clips don't work as well. You need a very sharp pin and you want to position it close to the edge. It is a little stiff, so it does take a little bit of effort, maybe. There we go. Okay. You want it close to the edge so that when you wrap your handle, you've got enough room. If your handle is a little bit bigger, it can be out that way, so you've got a nice surface to grab. So that is on this top side. Now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to position my other side of my Velcro on the opposite end, opposite side. Again, you're going to use pens. It is a little stiff. Okay, then when we go to the machine, we are going to stitch all the way around our Velcro, and I usually do it twice to secure it because when you are opening and closing this project, this is where all of your stress point is, is right on top of that hook and lip tape. So I like to go around two times. So let's go to the machine. Now that we're at the machine, we're going to stitch all the way around this hook and loop tape two times. When you position your um, project in your machine, you want to make sure that the head of your pen is toward you so it's easier to remove when you need to. If your pen head is way up here, then you have to reach way around your project and you're usually in the way, your foot is in the way. So make sure that your head of your pen is toward you. You're going to position your tape inside your machine and again I'm going to use the inside of my presser foot so I get a nice narrow hem or stitching line right outside on the edge. I want to make sure that I start on the long side, never a short side and never in the corner. Again it just gives you a little bit longer surface area to work with and is a little easier. Roll my needle down. I'm going to take a few stitches to secure it and then I'm going to pull my pin out. I'm going to do a little back stitch here at the top. I'm going to pull my pin out because your pin will get in your way. Get to that corner. Same project process. I'm going to get put my needle down, lift and turn. The fuzzy side of your Velcro is easier to stitch because it's more like a fabric. When you get to the bumpy side, it's a little bit trickier. Going around. And again, Go back over that stitching and I'm going to go around one more time. I'm using a light color thread so you can see what I'm stitching, but if you used a black thread on this, you would never even notice that second stitching line. I'm going to stitch across my stitching line and back stitch a couple of times. Threads. And again, if you were using black thread, you would not even notice those stitching lines on either side. So if you coordinate your thread to your fabric piece, then it works better. All right, now to the other side. Same thing, I'm going to put it in my, position it in my machine, 
on the long side using that inside edge of my foot as my guide. I'm going to take a few stitches and then I'm going to move, remove this pin. Now on the rough side, you want to make sure that you are as best as you can. Sometimes it's not easy because there's not a lot of space here. But your Velcro has an edge that there's not any of the hooks on. That's what you want to try to catch with your stitching. Back stitch a little bit. Now I'm going to pull my pin out. This side you need to go a little slower, making sure that your stitching is catching. If you get too far into the hook parts, your stitches won't catch and you'll have a loose stitching. I also will sometimes on the short side hand crank it because I have a little bit better control. that end and again I'm going to cross my stitching line and I'm going to go around one more time going just a little bit slower cross that end Now we're back at the beginning almost. I'm going to stitch across that and back stitch a couple of times. Clip my threads nice and close because they will get caught in those hooks and that has a tendency to pull your stitching out if the threads get caught. Now our Velcro is done. Now we finished our project. It's our bag handle. Has a Velcro or hook and loop tape, fits around the handle of your bag, and it makes it easier and softer to carry. I hope you liked today's project, and if you did, please subscribe to Sew, Learn, Create, and give this project a thumbs up. I'm trying to reach 100 subscribers, so be sure you click that subscribe button, and we'll see you the next time.